We're here at QuadTech's high-tech center demo area, and I'd like to walk you through some of the features and functionality of QuadTech's 100% web inspection system. Uh, the first item is uh, a motorized drum, which has a print sample mounted on it. The idea here is, is we want to simulate a, a running web scenario. Um, and also inside this area, we've got our LED lighting system and uh, one of our high-speed uh, cameras. The Training Wizard has a five-step process. Step one is our job details step, and the main purpose of the job details step is to allow the customer to track the particular product that we're going to inspect. So we need to understand what the product number is, we need to know what the job order is, we also have a field that allows us to put in a description of this particular product, and we also have the ability to uh, lay out the, the orientation of all of the panels on the pattern. So we may have a number of lanes and we will also have a number of impressions in one cylinder circumference or one plate length depending on the application. So to enter the details, uh, simply tap the product field and we'll get a, a pop-up menu which will allow us to enter manually the product number. However, if the product has been run before, we also have access to our data central database which will provide us a list of all of the previously run products. We're going to select product one by simply clicking OK. And what will happen is product one will appear in the product field but we will also get the description of the product and the impressions and lanes as they were entered the first time the job was run. Uh, the one piece of data that is not pulled up at this point is the job data because we assume this is a new run of the same product but if it's a continuation of the same order again we can go into the previously run orders and we can select the order we're currently on if we've reset the system if it's a new order what we would do is we would touch the field and we would enter the new order number or description that's the job detail step then we click on the next button to go to the second step of five, which is our print details. In this section, which is our print details, we have a number of fields that we have to populate here also. Uh, the first of these fields is our cylinder circumference, which defines the, uh, the, the print repeat length. It may be a cylinder circumference for gravure, it may be a plate length for an offset application, and all of these um, uh, names can be defined depending on the application. So if the print cylinder circumference was different or if we had chosen to select a new job this field would be blank we would have to enter the data but because we're running this job for the second or third or fifth time this data has automatically been pulled up okay the second uh, data point we need to enter here is our maximum speed and this is a very important feature of our system uh, the maximum speed is a setting that the operator enters that defines how quickly they're going to run for this particular product and the advantage of being able to set that is because the system uses line scan technology and has a, a fixed maximum camera speed, the lower the speed you print that, the higher the resolution the inspection image will be and therefore the better the inspection performance. A lot of other systems in the, in the, in the field don't have the option to change the divide by or the setting that you use with the camera for lower printing speeds and as a result if you had an application that was set for a maximum speed of about 500 meters per minute if you ran a job a very important job perhaps at maybe 200 meters per minute you would still inspect that at a 500 meter per minute resolution which is really not giving it you know the best attention that you should be able to give it so again to enter that data we've got it in here from the previous job but again we would touch that field and we get a, a, a numeric keypad in this situation and again we just tap in the the maximum speed we want to run this particular product at. Um, then we've got our web width. The web width value again has been recalled automatically, but again, if you need to enter it for a different web width, you can do that. Okay. Uh, the final element in here is our image flipping uh, functionality, which allows you to set the orientation of the image of the printed product that the operator sees because in a lot of situations uh, an operator is used to looking through some uh, semi-transparent or transparent materials which means he's always looking at the back of the product and as a result left is right and right is left and he's been conditioned to understand that when a defect occurs on the right hand side of the image it's actually the left hand side of the press as he looks at it so it's very important that the results are intuitive for the operator so it's, they very quickly understand where the problem is on press um, in another situation it may be more important to have the image orientated so that all of the text is legible, that the operator can see visually that the, the information that's contained on the printed product 
is actually correct because if you get a defect in printed or if you get a defect in a text area, what will happen is it's very, very easy to see the defect if you can read the text and see where the blotch appears. If that text is flipped vertically or horizontally, it becomes much more difficult to pick that defect out. So it's an option, it depends on the application, but the, the, the functionality is there.